Father, Junior, Lady God, Power, Junior, Lady God, Power, Junior, what? Mommy, Daddy, Power, He God, Yaga, we will go lot, we will want Junior, Yaga, Yaga, Daddy, Yaga, Daddy, he did with really God. Amen. Amen. And we're back. Job chapter 31, titled, What Can I Expect from God? I made a solemn pact with myself never to undress a girl with my eyes. So what can I expect from God? What do I deserve from God Almighty above? Isn't calamity reserved for the wicked? Isn't disaster supposed to strike those who do wrong? Isn't God looking, observing how I live? Doesn't he mark every step I take? Have I walked hand in hand with falsehood? Or hung out in the company of deceit? Weigh me on a set of honest scales so God has proof of my integrity. If I've started, if I've strayed off the straight and narrow, wanted things I had no right to, messed around with sin, go ahead then. Give my portion to someone who deserves it. If I've let myself be seduced by a woman and conspired to be with her, fine. My wife has every right to go ahead and be with anyone she wants to. For disgusting behavior like that, I deserve the worst punishment you could hand out. Adultery is a fire that burns the house down. I wouldn't expect anything I count dear to survive it. Have I ever been unfair to my employees when they brought a complaint to me? What then will I do when God confronts me? When God examines my books, what can I say? Didn't the same God who made me make them? Aren't we all made of the same stuff, equals before God? Have I ignored the needs of the poor? Turned my back on the indigent? Take, taken care of my own needs and fed my own face while they languished? Wasn't my home always open to them? Weren't they always welcome at my table? Have I ever left a poor family shivering in the cold when they had no warm clothes? Didn't the poor bless me when they saw me coming? knowing I'd brought coats from my closet? If I've ever used my strength and influence to take advantage of the unfortunate, go ahead, break both my arms, cut off all my fingers. The fear of God has kept me from these things. How else could I ever face him? Did I set my heart on making big money or worship at the bank? Show off because I was well off. Or sorry, did I boast about my wealth, show off because I was well off? Was I ever so awed by the sun's brilliance and moved by the moon's beauty that I let myself become seduced by them and worship them on the sly? If so, I would deserve the worst of punishments, for I would be betraying God himself. Did I ever gloat over my enemy's ruin or get excited over my rival's bad luck? No. I never said a word of detraction, of detraction, never cursed them even under my breath. Didn't those who worked for me say he, he fed us well? There were always second helpings and no stranger ever had to spend a night in the street. My doors were always open to travelers. Did I hide my sin the way Adam did? or conceal my guilt behind closed doors because I was afraid what people would say, fearing the gossip of the neighbors so much that I turned myself into a recluse. You know good and well that I didn't. Oh, if only someone would give me a hearing, I've signed my name to my defense. Let the Almighty One answer. I want to see my indictment in writing. Anyone's welcome to read my defense. I'll write it on a poster and carry it around town. I'm prepared to account for every move I've ever made. To anyone and everyone, prince or pauper, if the very ground that I farm accuses me, if even the furrows fill with tears from my abuse, if I've ever raped the earth from my own prof for my own profit, or dispossessed its rightful owners, then curse it with thistles instead of wheat, curse it with weeds instead of barley. The words of Job to his three friends were finished. 
Job chapter 32, titled Elihu Speaks, God's Spirit Makes Wisdom Possible. Job's three, fell, sorry, Job's three friends now fell silent. They were talked out, stymied because Job wouldn't budge an inch, wouldn't admit to an ounce of guilt. Then Elihu lost his temper. Elihu was the son of Barakel, the Buzite from the clan of Ram. He blazed out in anger against Job for pitting his righteousness against God's. He was also angry with the three friends because they had neither come up with an answer nor proved Job wrong. Elihu had waited with Job while they spoke because they were all older than he. But when he saw that the three other men had exhausted their arguments, he exploded with pent-up anger. This is what Elihu, son of Barakel, the Buzite, said. I'm a young man, and you are all old and experienced. That's why I kept quiet and held back from joining the discussion. I kept thinking. Experience will tell. The longer you live, the wiser you become. But I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person. The breath of the Almighty One that makes wise human insight possible. The experts have no corner on wisdom. Getting old doesn't guarantee good sense. So I've decided to speak up. Listen well. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. I hung on your words while you spoke, listened carefully to your arguments. While you searched for the right words, I was all ears. And now what you have proved, nothing. Nothing you say has even touched Job. And don't excuse yourselves by saying, we've done our best. Now it's up to God to talk sense into him. Job has yet to contend with me. And rest assured, I won't be using your arguments. Do you three have nothing else to say? Of course you don't. You're total frauds. Why should I wait any longer? Now that you're stopped dead in your tracks, I'm ready to speak my piece. That's right. It's my turn and it's about time. I've got a lot to say and I'm bursting to say it. The pressure has built up like lava beneath the earth. I'm a volcano ready to blow. I have to speak. I have no choice. I have to say what's on my heart, and I'm going to say it straight, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I was never any good at bootlicking. My maker would make short work of, of me if I started now. In now. In now. Job chapter 33. So please, Job, so please, Job, hear me out. Honor me by listening to me. What I'm about to say has been carefully thought out. I have no ulterior motives in this. I'm speaking honestly from my heart. The Spirit of God made me what I am. The breath of God Almighty gave me life. This portion is titled, God Always Answers One Way or Another. And if you think you can prove me wrong, do it. Lay out your arguments. Stand up for yourself. Look, I'm human, no better than you. We're both made of the same kind of mud. So let's work this through together. Don't let my aggressiveness overwhelm you. Here's what you said. I heard you say it with my own ears. You said, I'm pure. I've done nothing wrong. Believe me, I'm clean. My conscience is clear. But God keeps picking on me. He treats me like I'm his enemy. He's thrown me in jail. He keeps me under constant surveillance. But let me tell you, Job, you're wrong, dead wrong. God is far greater than any human. So how dare you haul him into court and then complain that he won't answer your charges? God always answers one way or another, even when people don't recognize his presence. In a dream, for instance, a vision at night, when men and women are deep in sleep, fast asleep in their beds, God opens their ears and impresses them with warnings to turn them back from something bad they're planning. This is funny because this is exactly what God did to me in my dream when I went to him about tattoos. This is exactly what he did. He warned me about it in a dream. Here it is in the Bible. You can't make this stuff up. Um, to turn them back from something bad they're planning. From some reckless choice. It was a reckless choice. And keep them from an early grave. From the river of no return. Or God might get their attention through pain by throwing them on a bed of suffering so they can't stand the sight of food, have no appetite for their favorite treats. They lose weight, wasting away to nothing, reduced to a bag of bones. They hang on the cliff edge of death, 
knowing the next breath may be their last. But even then, an angel could come, a champion. There are thousands of them to take up your case. A messenger who would mercifully intervene, canceling the death sentence with the words, I've come up with the ransom. Before you know it, you're healed, the very picture of health. Or you may fall on your knees and pray to God's delight. You'll see God smile and celebrate, finding yourself set right with God. You'll sing God's praises to everyone you meet, testifying, I messed up my life, and let me tell you, it wasn't worth it, but God stepped in and saved me from certain death. I'm alive again. Once more I see the light. This is the way God works over and over again. He pulls our souls back from certain destruction. So we'll see the light and live in the light. Keep listening, Job. Don't interrupt. I'm not finished yet. But if you think of anything I should know, tell me. There's nothing I'd like better than to see your name cleared. Meanwhile, keep listening. Don't distract me with interruptions. I'm going to teach you the basics of wisdom. Amen.